Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, and this is Hawaii Moving Forward. I'm Tim Apicella, your host, and today we're going to talk about design, gestalt. We're going to talk about design within transportation structures here in, in Honolulu and in Hawaii. And with me this afternoon, it's my pleasure to introduce Martin Despang. Martin, welcome. Thank you for coming. Martin is a professor of architecture at the uh, University of Hawaii Manoa. Martin also has his own show here. It's called um, Humane Architecture or Human Architecture? Both. Both, mm -hmm. okay. And that's every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Martin, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you for um, having me. Before we start, I would just like to talk about uh, kind of one who I admire a great deal, and that's Vladimir Osipov. Mm -hmm. And Vladimir Osipov was a renowned architect that had left his thumbprint on a lot of structures here in Hawaii, particularly the International Airport um, here in Honolulu and then in Maui, um, Kahului Airport. On December 12, 1964, he declared a war on ugliness. Mm -hmm. Who won the war? Well, thank you for having me, Tim, and that's an awesome question to start off with. We miss him a lot, Vladi, because he was the man uh, in not only doing the most uh, appropriate architecture of recent times for Hawaii and, and some of his colleagues, so, um, which whom we shouldn't forget, there was Alfred Price, um, there was uh, Pete Wimberley. Uh, but but Vladi was certainly the most outspoken and, and fearless in, in 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 approaching things like that. And if that is true, what he said for for way back, you know, we would need him even more today because at, at these times when he was operating, at least there was a certain consistency, there were certain ethics uh, conventions in in design and in society in general. And design basically should if it should do anything, if it does anything, is basically represent societal uh, sort of sort of movements and so I'm, I'm glad you mentioned him because he's uh, he was so all over the place as far as typology he did office buildings he did uh, shops um, he did residences and um, uh, he did so many things but he did he did our airport and our airport is actually what what sold me on uh, uh, coming here there are other things too but it was the most obvious when I came here they flew me in for my interview and I had a couple of other offers at other schools. There were somewhere on the mainland grade schools too, but the airports were mostly regional airports from the 80s or something like that, really tacky and, mm -hmm. and cheesy and bad. And I came uh, here and I got off and I saw this you know, powerful, heroic concrete beams in combination with the koa wood, this, the, the simplicity, but the sophistication of that. And then the smell of our tropical air, I said, this is it, I want to be here. So, I mean, that's a statement. You, you get me started That's on a that big one. statement, yeah. And we were talking about our other most favorite airport. You want to volunteer to mention that one, which is not here, but in New York City? Please do. Uh, yeah, you do. I mean, it says. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we agreed uh, before the show, it's a TWA by Aero yeah. and then, which is another <coughs> so heroic example of that we as a society were able to to build uh, that powerful and that heroic and patriotic, you can yeah. say, in a, in a really healthy kind of way. So, so again, um, kind of we, 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 should, we should very urgently uh, connect the dots to where Vladi has basically stepped off the stage and that's where we have to step on and, and pick up that torch. I, I couldn't agree more on that. Was the one. torch dropped? And if so, I, when? I, I, th I think so. I think so. Um, it's, it's tough. I would have to be a historian or a sociologist mm -hmm. to exactly, and if I would ever do a PhD, which I will never, um, I would do it on that one. When uh -huh. did we lose it, basically? But right. I, think, I think it must have been somewhere, actually, tragically, when I went to school in the early 90s, where the 80s were bad enough, but in the early 90s, we have lost all sense for what's relevant, for what's important. I mean, in the 60s, it didn't come from nowhere. Vietnam War, you know, the people uh, stood up and they were fighting for things they believed in. And somewhere in the 90s, it came down to, to surface. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say it's probably the, uh, the, the sort of substantial approach that, that everything had uh, way back got lost and we reduced it to just the, the surface of it. And we talked before the show that if we do infrastructure today, we make it look neat, we make it look nice, we throw some Hawaiiana decor on it, and we think that does it, but it actually doesn't. I'm glad mean, you mentioned uh, I want to dive a little bit deeper mm -hmm. on that exact point mm -hmm. a little bit later in the show, but um, you're here. I, would you please show me some examples of, of, of design and 
So yeah, we'll yeah. And um, let's start a little story here, storytelling. Mm -hmm. And this is this is sort of my um, Holly uh, sort of view or interpretation of, of transportation on the islands here, especially our island uh, of Oahu. And so way back, this is an illustration of the, uh, the system of, of land management, the Aupua. And people just walked as, and they swam. And uh, we go to the next picture. At some point, we moved from two legs to four legs and let us been basically pulled by horses. And, and at that, the next step um, is, is the one where things have changed. I, I believe that the two worst things that ever happened to the island uh, were the uh, import, the introduction of the combustion engine, mm -hmm. both in, as air conditioning in my discipline and um, in, in transportation in your discipline. Once we started to do that, things went down the hill and that traces back to Vladi Osipov because he hated air conditioning. He, he said, we have the trade winds. This is the best natural yep. AC in the world. Big boxes and, 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 and dicky type design. Exactly, exactly. Was, and, was something he, and, he did not and, care for. And we should use that. <clears throat> if we can go back to picture three, this is, um, I, I make a cut here and we return full circle at the end of the show. But this is where I come from. I grew up in a very uh, urban European fabric where actually I walked everywhere. I had to walk, it was a five story, we talked about TOD. I, it was a five story walk up, 96 steps, I will never forget because I was the one to get the milk when my parents said so. And by the way, today is my father's birthday, so happy birthday, happy Dad. Birthday. And so it, it was really that, but then uh, you see, I got excited about two wheels and I got excited about four wheels in the next picture. America was the holy land and, and so this is my 72 Plymouth Fury, you know, that drove me all over the continental U.S. No, no computer chips in that? No, not at all. And, <laughs> and the next picture, I actually used the automotive as a vehicle for explanation for architecture, and the next couple of pictures are about that. So how you can actually rejuvenate, so the cash for clunkers thing that, that you guys got from us Germans, by right. the way, was a catch, it was a branding, it had nothing to do with sustainability, the way how it was sold. Right. Because the few Priuses and whatever we got out of that are so marginal that they don't count. But on that picture, uh, number five, uh, good old rocker Neil Young has this Link Vault project where he converts his 59 Lincoln Continental into a hybrid, into oh, a 30 miles per gallon hybrid. If you can think about the impact of that uh, nationally, he can train every little uh, uh, shop, uh, automotive shop at the corner and make them convert, it would be huge, right? So the next picture, we're still within cars, is innovation. We both share our love for the innovators in the United States. This is Bucky Fuller. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have one of the next shows with DeSoto Brown uh, about the, the Kaiser Dome here. Oh, so we, okay. we have some trace of Bucky Thank here on the Lester. island. Yep. So he was ahead of his time in so many ways. This was a seven-seater. It was so fuel efficient. Just, just for clarification, that was the geodesic dome that he yeah, was yeah, infamous e for. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. Next picture is uh, when we design new, you know, maybe these uh, new, and this is an off-the-grid net zero office building we designed. It better sort of demonstrates in, in its form, in its design, its innovation. And there are some cars who, who kind of do that, but I'm, I'm holding against the Priuses, you know, I don't, I don't find it innovative as far as design. The Honda Inside, by the way, they're one of the very first ones actually did that, and they're mm -hmm. actually collectibles now, I found out, they're very durable, so uh, this is sort of a pioneer in, in the range of, of cars. What Next, year were they first produced? Uh, they were they were here. I think they were introduced actually here in the some in the 90s actually. Oh, okay. In the 90s. Back then. Okay. And the next picture is is downsizing. So this is my this is my German car which I still keep. This is a Renault Twingo. It's a micro compact car. This is not my car. I wouldn't have put that sticker on. But my son <laughs> Joey, who is also standing there in his car, this is an Audi A1. This is the smallest Audi. They don't import that here mm -hmm. to to us. They they don't want us to have it. You know. So downsizing in architecture very important, but also in transportation important. And next picture, you can downsize even more. These are my mentees, uh, Chris and Shiraj, visiting me in my hometown. So to the left is my, by the way, 23-year-old car. 
that might be small, but the same maker, this is Renault, makes this Twitzy. Mm -hmm. And the Twitzy is a, would be a perfect car for Honolulu here because it's a two-seater. You see, actually, you sit behind each other, mm -hmm. and it's easy breezy, so it's like a Vladi, you know, philosophy so kind of car. So you have a built-in back, backseat driver. Yeah, and, okay. it, and it's basically, <laughs> it's basically, uh, it's basically all electric. Okay. So why don't we get these goodies? They're out there. And, and at that point, I want to stop with with a uh, with a light uh, uh, four wheels and go to the heavy four wheels next mm -hmm. picture please which is the bus we have supposedly one of the best bus systems in the u.s there is probably some truth to that but me who is predominantly uh, on on two wheels we get to that next um if i am behind a bus it's horrible if i'm in the bus they cool it down to sub-zero it's horrible too so there are many right. defaults on buses as well but let's get to design number 12. This is uh, traces back to my Nebraska years in 2008. Uh, that was Megan's design. She rethought a bus station. And she, she thought about it socially, that sometimes you end up with these people you don't know, strangers, right? And sometimes it's great to communicate with them. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you're there by yourself. Sometimes you're there together, and, and this here basically tries to say these are almost like Arna Jacobson uh, uh, chair. egg chairs yep, the egg chair. on, on tracks, right. and you can turn them around. And if you're there with your, with your loved one, you can do what you see at the very top right. You can get very cozy and basically close yourself off. Fascinating project to rethink sort of transportation from a social point of view. Next picture is is probably what you all prefer this is a bicycling here and, and jay our founding father is a pioneer in the in the bicycling movement and and if if we don't bicycle here where would we do it in the netherlands they dedicate entire highways to bicycles right. it freezes and it rains and they do it anyway so if we, we don't um, do this here the previous show we um we had a, we had someone from the bicycle league yeah and really comes down to segregating the lanes that are safe yeah not just necessarily having a bike bike lane that is in between general purpose lanes because there's a fear factor exactly so we need to think about how we're gonna make these lanes safer absolutely so, and what can we do as a designer that's number 15 um, <coughs> whenever um, or, or actually yeah, 15 um, Whenever, you know, it's the little things. You gotta, you gotta elevate the post-fossil commuter above the fossil, make him or her special by design. So if you design them a bike rack, which we try to do here, in a, in a, in a, in a way, in a nice way, they feel like, oh, I'm special, right? I'm, I'm, and they're proud. And so that way you can encourage. And rethinking conventions, this is a, this is a bike rack out of wood. Yeah, we could make simple. this out of Albicia wood here, reclaim it, engineer it. This is a fiber cement board. It doesn't have to be exclusive. It doesn't have to be glitzy. It could yeah. be very utilitarian, but it has character. And thank you for adopting the term gestalt yeah. that well, at the very beginning <laughs> that Jay and I started to prefer over design in, yeah. the, in the last show. All right. Well, we're going to be right back and we'll continue on with your, our discussion. This is Hawaii Moving Forward. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians or artists, to see how we can come together to make a renewable future, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Aloha, I'm Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider, a weekly Thursday show at 3 o'clock that goes all summer long talking about issues living in a condo association. Each week we bring experts to talk about the rights and obligations of owners and boards of directors to successfully run their condominium. It's a great educational show, answers a lot of questions. We hope you'll visit us sometime. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Hawaii Moving Forward, and today we're speaking with Martin Despang, who's going to talk about, who has been talking about design. And uh, Martin, please continue. Mm -hmm. So this gets us finally. We have been on on two feet, on four feet, on four wheels in different ways, and on two wheels. And now we get on track. So if we get number eighteen, which I will just skip over because you've been talking enough about the heavy rail 
problem that we have. Oh no, here. we need to talk about oh, more we of it. Need to? Okay. <laughs> a lot more. But you know, I mean the, the track itself and the, the sort of the massiveness of the construction and the cost going with it is one thing, but what, what really gets me going is is what we see in here that couldn't we have least have ordered or have someone design uh, we, the, we call this show tropical transportation, a tr tropical version of that car. This is a truly invasive one. They, mm -hmm. would, they would buy this anywhere in the world where it gets cold and hot. It doesn't do here. So then we feel a little bad and we throw this sort of wave pattern on it, right? Right. But it should have been, an, if Vladi... Is, is, that the, is that the design right there? I believe so. That's what I, they've I, selected. And, and so um, that or something else. And so I believe, like, um, you know, really... Um, and it's the same with, with the viaducts here. Yeah, right? let's talk about that because I see they've tried to incorporate a, um, a cultural theme. Who selects this? Is this going to the community? Are there, you know, are there options and the community says we like option one or option three? How, how are we arriving at these kind of motifs uh, on our concrete structures? Well, and I put these two in a polemic way I together, see that, yeah. obviously, right? I, right. I, I, I'm not knowledgeable enough, honestly, to, I, I have my sort of theories, and I think it's like we design this and then somehow this sort of bad conscience catches up with us. And we say, oh, what can we do that's not too expensive to make it look like but but again the the spirit of the people here any uh, you know people anywhere in the world indigenous people they just did the right thing they didn't do anything more and i, I my my theory is they wouldn't have done this sort of heavy lifting of of that kind of heavy rail right and i will show you example here number thir 19 is is how this is the beginning actually of my uh, architectural family business um and this is our project, our kickoff project. It was uh, two th almost two decades ago when we had the Expo, the World Expo in 2000 in Hanover, Germany. There needed to be a new uh, public transportation artery, and we won a competition to design these, uh, these uh, actually 12 or 13 tram stations. And uh, we, we, uh, this is one of the, the publications in the wallpaper magazine, and certainly you can read it and saying they thought it is sexy, right? I mean, that's what the cover title page or the article title page basically says. But uh, if we go to the next page, um, what's uh, really important to me, and maybe we can get 23 uh, uh, in, instead, but, but this picture is what it was originally designed for, to give access to people, mm -hmm. you know, um, basically egress access to public transportation, wheelchair people, uh, you know, strollers for, for kids and dads and moms and, and, and older people. But, but this picture, when I went there with my mentees this summer, we were sitting in a cafe and watching that. And that, I think, is so more important than talking about the design itself, but the impact of design. Because, yes, we can see, we can see basically uh, Arab Muslim ladies on the bench. We can see an, an African uh, guy walking. We see some German dudes there. And we actually see some other cultures there, too. So design can actually sort of connect people and, and, and ease their fear that, that is instigated currently all around the world that we try to, you know, shy away from each other and we're, like, afraid. I mean, design can basically bring people together. And, and think that's an... Uh, so, again, I... Is that I, one of the goals of design? It, it should be. Should uh, usually, be, I, I think it was in the, mm -hmm. in the good old days we're talking about, Saren and uh, Osipov. That was their intention. They came with a social mission and they just tried to find the right gestalt. But these days we do something that's driven mostly by capitalized motivations and then we brand it, right? Mm -hmm. That's sort of our conspiracy theory and it's probably more than that. How does government uh, play into that? Um, I mean, why is it so difficult for government that are working on public works projects to incorporate good design with the, end, the final end product? Um, is, it, is it cost? Is it just we don't have time, we have other priorities? Um, what, what's your theory about that? Well, a, a positive answer would be if we show 24. Okay. This is actually a competition we were invited to participate for the city of Karlsruhe in Germany. And they had, they had a light rail and a very sensitive uh, green corridor that, you know, there was a lot of demonstrations and people were, uh, environmentalists were chaining themselves to trees and saying this is not supposed to happen. So the goal was how can we make this in, a, in the least obtrusive way and integrate it the most. And once again, as if I would have known, I would end up in Hawaii. The material choice is very much like we would use it here. There's mm -hmm. strips of basalt. And every other one is, once again, could be an albiza, a eucalyptus, mm -hmm. uh, basically um, a batten. 
and you just throw this out on the track and even the, the little waiting house is out of the same material. So it could be very, and this gets back is sort of an answer to your question, you know, this doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, this doesn't have to be a heavy lifting. So it doesn't answer your question because I don't have the answer. I'm mm -hmm. as puzzled as you are and maybe with, with good examples, with, with best practices, we can actually involve people who are more in these decision positions to, to talk about that and motivate them. Well, I'd like to get some hard people on here and actually I'm going to reserve part yeah. of the show for mm -hmm. what, That's you know, awesome. how are they engaging in, yeah. in, in design and gestalt with, yeah. with yeah. the structures that, you know, let's think how long these are going to be in place. Mm -hmm. 50 years, mm -hmm. 70 years, mm -hmm. uh, that's a long time with it bad is. design to be it stuck is. with it. It is, and number 31 is actually the project that we also see uh, in the background all the time. This is a project we did uh, most recently, um, and number 31 uh, illustrates that working title, uh, we called it Urban Waterfalls, and it's basically the, uh, the canopy for something that I always thought wouldn't have worked here until recently I ran into an older gentleman who is a, a veteran structural engineer from the good old days and we got into a discussion and he said we should have and we could have done a subway here and I immediately said well you know the water table is so high we're mm -hmm. a coastal town he said is New York City as well isn't Seattle as well right so it shouldn't have been a no-go for a subway. However, the big dig proved otherwise. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> it proved exactly. that the water table was yeah. problematic. Yeah, and well, and, and again, I'm, I'm not promoting and saying we yeah. should have done a subway, right. but this is again an example for when you have a subway that once again, and the, the inspiration or the motivation for that project is obviously the, the Paris subway ride from the, from the Art Deco uh, day or the Art Nouveau days mm -hmm. when, when these shelters were you know, delicately, uh, sophisticatedly crafted pieces of, of public artwork that were once again you know, um, privileging the, the, the public transport commuter and saying, you're something really special and we honor you and this is why you get such, a, such an awesome uh, design and gestalt. Did, did we t make a transition from when we had all the streetcars and, and you know, street you know, um, rails back mm -hmm, in the 30s mm -hmm. and 40s and then the advent of, of, of transit bus. Mm -hmm. Did that change dramatically our transportation structures as far as design, do you think? I, I totally believe. So number 33 is the perfect picture. Okay. And once again, yeah. it's very blurry and mm -hmm. I've, I apologize for that, but it's, you can, we can glimpse what it, what it says. So this is for me the key picture. This is my most, I have to find the original where it's not blurred because I, I took it from online. But this speaks for me, this is for me the epitome of how it should be. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the electric street car that went up into the mountains, as one can see. It's easy breezy. I mean, this is, this is tropical transportation at its best. And, and I think all we have to do, and this is number 34, is sort of a demonstration of an academic project once again, how we could potentially reconnect. So look into the past to learn for the future. So we wouldn't bring these things back nostalgically. Once again, we have these trolleys, you know, which mostly the Japan airline, uh, you know, tourists kind of use in Waikiki. They're basically fossil dinosaurs. They got the same horrible combustion engines. They are easy breezy, so they look like the old streetcar, but they're not, right? Yeah. So it's once again faking, it's branding. We need to bring the technology back. And it's interesting that um, I was actually talking to um, one of my guests, Nicole Horry, who I would highly recommend for you to have her on your show as well because we were talking more about the cultural impacts of her very visionary concept and you can talk more about the infrastructural one and that's picture number 32. Mm -hmm. She proposes, uh, I, I call it sky driving, so she proposes gondolas or, or even uh, sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, like you have in ski resorts, right. the, 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 the lifts where you basically, you, you bring back the idea of the streetcar, but the streetcar in these days to reintroduce it, we had to do this in Hanover with this project to squeeze it into the existing uh, street width, right. which is really tough. But for elevating it, you just need a pole here and there. And just imagine, I'm, I'm highly, I'm getting on her nerves because I keep telling her, don't import an enclosed cabin, right? You need to have, and she's there, she wants to, opinion Farina could, could be involved as a, as a designer. Mm -hmm to make the easy breezy tropical version of that. Could you imagine you just slowly cruising through the sky in our most awesome environment? I, I could, but I, I also remember political realities. Um, this concept came up just briefly in Seattle as we were putting in our rail system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, um, people pay a premium for their views mm -hmm, from where mm -hmm, they, the mm -hmm, properties are located. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now somehow um, 
throwing something up that may par partially obstruct their view yeah, becomes yeah. a political reality. So there's there's the rub. Um, there don't, is the rub. Don't we know that from something we skip on, which I also hear now it's being reconsidered, which is the ferries, right? It right. was the same thing, why right? some people got because of their views, right? The That's views. another conspiracy theory. And I think this is sort of, you just identified the problem that we have. We were way more collective as a society where the common good stood mm -hmm. above everything, where now it's more the individual. Well, I think you look at um, property values and um, those that have the best views mm -hmm. are the more expensive mm -hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. Those that own the more expensive homes tend to be a little bit probably more politically powerful yeah, yeah. than those that are on the back 40 mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. Malka's side mm -hmm. that, that don't have the political yeah, power. Yeah, yeah. So you think about um, you know where yeah. the pressure and the power comes from as far as how our design moves forward in, yeah. in this town. And 34 I think is sort of probably the, the closing picture, the best closing picture to demonstrate that it could be a very integrative approach. This is a project I had the benefit and privilege to do with the emerging generation. We call it Rethinking Paradise, where you rethought Waikiki, because there's a serious uh, urgency of re redesigning uh, tourism, because tourists who come here, they're just not turned on anymore by Waikiki. That was maybe the case in the 60s and certainly, mm -hmm. but not today anymore. So if you reintroduce that and you basically, rather than being so the walking on Kuhi or even Kalakaua Avenue is no fun as a pedestrian. Yeah. It smells, it's loud, it's dirty, it's ugly. So if you just you know take out the individual traffic and replace it with uh, with with rail systems, both for luggage and both for food and both for people, like the plantation trains have done it. Right. right. I stopped a while ago to say, well, you know, where I come from, we do it this way because I heard too many times. Well, then why don't you go back? Uh, because, so I, I taught myself really? basically, yes, really, so, I, I, okay. I taught myself to say, to find out okay. what was the case here on the island, and reconnect to that. So the plantation train is a perfect example to me that basically was hauling the sugar cane uh, as much as the pineapple as well as the people. And the people were dressed up and it was a social event to ride these trains. So I think these are traditions to really, um, well, you know, look back Well, the occupancy vehicle has basically taken away all that social exactly. experience. Exactly. Transit becomes um, the old saying, how do you take the public out of public transportation? Mm -hmm. um, why, when it's an opportunity for us to, to meet our neighbors and, and speak with our neighbors? But, you know, it's, it's, it's come on with a derogatory concept and um, it's something we need to get past. Absolutely. We're almost at the end here and I just wanted to say that there's, I can't say enough about design and the importance of design in, in, mm -hmm. our, in our culture, be it um, no matter what culture you're from, design has to play a big part in that. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, then I think we're doomed with structures for 50, 70 years mm -hmm. that um, subliminally, I think, affect us rather than not always consciously, but subliminally, mm -hmm. it affects us and, and our moods. It's so true. And yeah. I want to thank you for, as a colleague, to run this show because I think your show is like, obviously, because you know, my, my way of talking about it proves how passionate I am about that. And I think your show is not only, we say we run on tourism, we run on military, but we run on transportation and education economically. But it's more than, it's, it's a cultural thing that we have to sort of rethink a transportation on the island that could benefit us all. It wouldn't be uh, counterproductive to any of the industries. I think we would all benefit from that. And so thank you for taking well, thank this you on as a, that. as a subject. Transportation isn't the most sexiest thing to talk about, but, but it, it always ranks very high as far as what people feel is important mm -hmm. on, on their mobility or the lack thereof. Mm -hmm. So um, again, thank you very much. And I'd just like to say this is our conclusion of today's show. And uh, Martin, I hope we can get you back on. I think we've just barely scratched the surface here on design and how it affects our transportation, uh, the structures, and how people relate to that.